All right, hello everyone. Uh, we're coming to you from three different locations. And my name is Wayne Malcolm. I am the JELT Director of Program. And I'm mostly in charge of dealing with the JELT International Conference, which is coming to you this year in Nagoya, uh, November 1st to the 4th at the Wink Aichi in central Nagoya. So, and today I'm interviewing Stephen Herder and Catherine Littlehale Oki, who are both co conference chairs for the JELT International Conference. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about the theme of teacher efficacy learner agency. That's the theme of the conference. And we're going to be discussing some of the topics around that theme so that we can give a bit more understanding and breadth to the theme. Uh, but first, just a little brief introduction from Catherine and Stephen. Maybe, uh, Catherine, you want to start first? Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, I'm Catherine Oki. Uh, I'm a living in Kyoto, Japan, uh, and uh, I'm an assistant professor at uh, Doshisho Women's College. Um, and I teach in the Department of International Studies. Um, yeah, I was, uh, and still am in the young learner world as well. Uh, and uh, I'm quite excited to, to be part of JELT 2019. Thanks. Hi, my name is Stephen Herder. Uh, I'm working at Kyoto Notre Dame University in Kyoto, Japan. Um, I've been in Japan close to 30 years. Uh, came over for one year, like many people do, and never left. Uh, I'm very excited, especially working with Wayne and Catherine has been uh, a real treat so far, and I'm really looking forward to the conference. Okay, with that, uh, just moving forward, so a few questions um, to explain, let's getting into the theme, right? So we want to get into the theme a little bit, and so a few questions that I have just broadly speaking, let's start with the first half of the theme, uh, teacher efficacy. Um, maybe, uh, Stephen, you're, I know, yeah, uh, how, coming from, uh, you're the one who kind of proposed this, so yep. tell us a little bit about teacher efficacy. Yes, um, so efficacy is one of those weird words that we hear sometimes, but uh, you're kind of hamstrung to define it. So I want to go back to three very quick terms, uh, self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-efficacy. Now, we all know self-confidence is, I can do it. Yes, we can. And self-esteem means your own self-worth, your um, feelings of, uh, I'm okay, I like myself, I have good self-esteem, or uh, I have low self-esteem. But the idea of self-efficacy is somewhere between the two. And what it actually means, it came through Albert Bandura back in the 1970s, and he uh, defined it as a measurable thing, a measurable construct that said it's a belief that you can take the steps needed in order to be successful. So that's what that whole, that belief of somebody who has high efficacy, high self-efficacy, is they know how to get where they want to be. Now that then, after years of, of research into self-efficacy, it kind of morphed or expanded into teacher efficacy. And then when I started reading about this about a year ago, I thought, oh wow, I, I guess I see a lot of teachers as those who have high teacher efficacy, meaning that they really believe they can impact their students' learning. Well, it just oozes from them. Every decision they make is kind of based on, I'm gonna get those students where they need to be. And conversely, I've, I've met some teachers for, for a number of, you know, legitimate or illegitimate reasons ha have kind of gotten to the point of, well, it doesn't matter what I do. They're not really going to improve or they're not going to change much at all. And we'd say that they have low teacher efficacy. Hmm. And then so finally, just what's, what's really now cutting edge is something that's called collective teacher efficacy. And that idea is something that was really meaningful to me because that's something that Catherine and I experienced over the last three years at our previous university is where a group of us made a commitment to come together and share our ideas 
and and find what we agreed on and and argue over what the outcomes could be and present the same kinds of messages to all of the students in our department and that's mm -hmm. called collective teacher efficacy where you 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 create uh, goals and then you actually give evidence to the students you show them how their typing skills their speed reading their their speaking skills their fluency you give them information to show them that they're succeeding and that's all under this umbrella of collective teacher efficacy so it's it's quite deep this efficacy idea from self-efficacy teacher efficacy and collective teacher efficacy and that I kind agree. of forms the first half of our theme for JOLT 2019. Wow, thank you very much. That's very informative. Wow, great. Uh, so moving to the second half of learner agency, Catherine, would you like to expand on learner agency? Sure. Um, so um, this, you know, was was half of the theme that, that came from the board and uh, I was familiar with the idea of learner agency, but I was mostly uh, familiar with just the agency idea. So uh, I come from a sociology and gender studies background in my undergrad, and the idea of agency in, a, in and of itself is simply the fact that you have choice and that you have voice. Mm -hmm. And so, um, this also harkens back to Bandura, who uh, Steve mentioned. Um, but the fact that you have, you believe, it's again a belief that you have the power to act. So mm -hmm. for learners, um, this is knowing that they need to learn something or knowing that they need to unlearn something or knowing that they need to relearn something. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that they, believe they have a choice and they have a voice uh, in their learning, whether it's learning, unlearning, relearning. Um, there's also the sort of skills, I guess, that come into this. So um, knowing how they learn best, um, being proactive uh, in their learning, um, that they can set goals and they can set action steps to help them get uh, to their learning goals. Um, they can develop learning strategies. They know the tools uh, that they might need to learn. Um, so, again, it's a, a, a proactiveness, I think, uh, from the learner's side. Then there's the teacher's side, of course, that we can have an effect on that, um, that uh, we can advocate for students having choice and for having voice. Um, this is the 21st century. Uh, everybody talks a lot about, you know, how there's so much information out there that from now we must continue to learn this idea of learnability, that we have to be adaptable uh, so that we can keep up with the changing times. Um, so knowing that we can uh, learn and that teachers can then uh, influence that, that we believe, going back to teacher efficacy, that we believe we can have an impact on it. Um, so uh, there's, there's also this uh, side to it that, that F, uh, sorry, agency, learner agency, is almost a competency in and of itself that it's not all encompassing. So what I mean is a student might, may have agency uh, for one task, uh, or for one context even. But in another learning context or for another task, they may not have or feel they have agency. Um, Sarah Mercer, who has done uh, some research on this and has, has written uh, a few papers about this, um, she, she's at University of Graz and she talks about, um, she, she, she puts it in a complex uh, dynamic system because, um, it's not, um, it's in the context of whatever they're learning. So mm -hmm. as teachers, if we can look at it as a competency to be developed within the task or within the skill or within the class that, that uh, we're teaching, mm -hmm. um, perhaps uh, we can improve learners' agency uh, mm -hmm. or help them to improve their, their agency. Um, and 
when we first also proposed this, a lot of people are coming back going, well, what, what are these two and why are they together? Why, why do we have sort of two sides of this theme? Yeah. And I think, you know, we were grappling with that a bit as well. And, and one thing that I kept coming back to is that there, this is not a duality. We're not talking really about two separate things because at the root, they're both about belief. Mm, yeah. We're talking about teachers' beliefs that they can make a difference in learners' learning and that learners can make a difference in their learning so that together we can have an effect on, on students' achievement. Um, I think I think um, just to add on to that yeah. for a second is that I really felt like uh, when Catherine and I first discussed this that we thought well if we're going to do this let's let's go for it and try to do as uh, let's try to get as involved as possible and and that kind of uh, I've been at this for almost thirty years now and and this kind of fits into educational leadership in my mind that we we believe this stuff it's not just picking a theme it's kind yeah. of stuff that we really believe in and it's up to us and a whole bunch of us if you if you go to the website and read the introduction to the theme it starts out with coming of age and how so many of us um, who have been in this game for a number of years are now moving into positions of leadership in our jobs or certainly in the classroom at the, at, the, the, at, the, at the core, we're leading students, but within schools and departments and, and businesses, that it's really a good opportunity for us to stand up and say, hey, we really have some good ideas and we think we know uh, some worthwhile ways to approach teaching and learning. Yeah. And so I feel really like uh, I, I wanna be a part of that conversation and, and I'm really thrilled that we have an opportunity amongst the three of us to toss this theme up for discussion. And we've already had comments, wow, what a meaty theme that is. Boy, I really sink my teeth into that. It's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think the same, yeah, same. I think uh, a lot of us are coming into, you know, they say coming into your own, in your yeah. own profession. And we're definitely in that, time where we can now express ourselves maybe a bit more clearly because we've we realized this is this is what we believe this is what we want to do and this is what we want to do going forward mm. Mm. okay uh any other uh, comments on the theme i think i'm real curious what uh what kinds of discussions are going to come out and what kinds of presentations and we all had to google search these terms yeah, Catherine, what did you go yeah, through? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think um, if you're going to read something um, sort of in preparation uh, for this conference, I think looking at Bandura would, would, would be good. Um, yeah. You know, he talks about uh, agency. Um, he would... I mean, he, he was a psychologist. He was in the Department of Psychology, I think, at, at Stanford. And, yeah. Um, and he talked a lot. He talked a lot about uh, social cognitive theory. Um, so I think he would be a, a, a good person to to read. Um, also, uh, Harvard did a um, a study uh, and looked at, and this was looking at sixth through ninth grade classrooms. But um, he looked at they looked at the influence of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, sort of trying to uh, look at the, the achievement gaps. Um, and it talks about, that report talks about agency and, and different ways that teachers influence agency. Um, so yeah, I think those are, are, we have a, are we putting the resources up on the website? Yeah, actually, I was, I was going to say one of the, one of my, uh, one of the things on my to-do list is to send all the, the, uh, list our, our resource list and to get that up on the website so that people can see where we're drawing a lot of this information from and that it's a uh, yeah there's a yeah it's a very good resource list we've given it to all our plenary speakers so and mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think it's a good thing we'll put up we'll, we, yeah we'll put that up on the re, uh, website so um you were just mentioning uh, albert bandura and this is his big book it's a big book and he's actually uh still alive he's about 94 years old right now living in canada i'd love him to come over to the conference right. uh, 
But as far as the teacher efficacy, you've got this collective efficacy book that's very famous right now. Um, you've got other books like Leading Impact Teams, another really good okay, book. Yeah. Um, and then uh, all of this work is originally based on John Hattie, who's from New Zealand. And he's actually had a lot of his work, which is based on a concept he called visible learning, right? And okay, it, yeah. It's actually, uh, he took about 800 different research papers and did a meta-analysis of what were all the factors that impact achievement in any subject among any kinds of students. And he came up with a list of 150 different factors that, that um, you, you can read about in some of those resource articles that Wayne's gonna make available to everybody. So it's a really fascinating um, subject all around. Yeah, and a great thing is you just showed those books are in uh, Japanese. So a lot of this information is uh, in various languages and very accessible, obviously, to the Japanese side, uh, our, our uh, Japanese colleagues and those people who, who like to read and do their research in the Japanese context. Yeah. And coincidentally, I mean, what he found, how he found is that it was the collective teacher efficacy was, uh, he argues, is the most yeah. effective. And the second thing was learner agency. Um, so it somehow all came together <laughs> in our theme, uh, despite. Yeah. Uh, so, our, so our theme really hits those two top factors. Yeah. And, you know, I say tomato, you say tomato, efficacy, efficacy. Uh, I think we need to have a little show and, you know, song and dance, uh, perhaps for the, the opening. <laughs> after, <laughs> after, 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 the, after the one opening, you could do the efficacy, efficacy. That's right. But let's not call the whole thing off. Yeah, right. definitely. All right. I have my moment. All righty. Shall we wrap up there? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, that hit all the three areas that we wanted to hit, plus it got that little summary section in there of um, the, Good. of uh, what you were talking about, uh, about the topics that will come up at the conference that we can talk about. Mm. So, so by, by, by all means, if anybody wants to contact us for any, anything, we'll be at the, uh, at the EBMs this year, the executive board meetings, and uh, yep. if anybody else wants to talk about uh, ideas or collaboration or anything else i'm always big ears on all of those things yeah and if anybody wants to yeah send any of that stuff by email or they have something they want to do in writing maybe they uh they can always contact uh they can always get to us by using the email address program at jolt.org p-r-o-g-r-a-m program at jolt.org and that'll be and then uh, we'll definitely get those messages Thank yep. you.